is Upbeat with beatboxer, musician, speaker, and show host, Parker K. Hey everyone, welcome to Upbeat, and thank you very much for being here and for listening in today. If you would, please follow the podcast wherever you're listening to it right now, and if you like the show, then leave an upbeat review that is always super appreciated, so thank you for that. Today's guest is Italina Kirkness, and she's an online presence expert, social media expert, professional speaker, Inman News contributor, and championship tennis player, so that's pretty freaking cool. Uh, but yeah, she knows everything there is to know about building our online presence, everything there is to know about LinkedIn and Instagram, and it was absolutely amazing to have her here on Upbeat to share some helpful tactics with us so we can boost our online presence and really utilize utilize those social media platforms, but it was also really cool to get to know her more and to hear more of her story uh, because she, in the truest sense of the word, is an entrepreneur. She is someone who left a comfy job, took the leap into entrepreneurship, building her own social media agency to do exactly what we talk about in this episode, which is help others build their online presence and social media presence. And so she's doing it. She's killing this thing. And it was awesome to learn from her and hear her story. And I think episodes like this really inspire me. And I know they inspire you as well to be better and more creative and more resilient entrepreneurs. So without further ado, let's get into it. Italina, thank you very much for joining me on Upbeats. I appreciate it. Oh, I'm so thrilled. I'm so thrilled, Parker. Me too. I'm so happy to have you here. And yet again, another one of my guests to join me from Clubhouse. So before we get into anything, I just want to hear what are your thoughts on this new Clubhouse app? You know, it's amazing. First word that comes to my mind is community. And just yesterday, I had one of those days. It wasn't quite the best, most amazing day. And I happened to pop into Clubhouse at the end of the day, and you were holding a room. I didn't know this beforehand. And I come in, and it's the upbeat room. Everyone is sharing why they're upbeat. And it was just infectious. And I had a smile on my face, and it was like the, the problems of my day just melted away. Thank you so much. I'm glad that room helped. Uh, that's, you know, one of my goals with the podcast, one of my goals with uh, the rooms I do on Clubhouse is to just keep things upbeat. You know, we don't have to, you know, be so negative and and depressed all the time. <laughs> so, uh, but I'm glad that I'm glad that helped. And again, a pleasure to have you here. Uh, kind of a custom thing that I do on this on this podcast is start with story. So. Uh, if you don't mind, we would love to hear from you. would love to hear your story, anything you'd like to share, but maybe uh, maybe drop in there a little bit how how you became interested in what you do now with social media and helping people with their online presence. Happy to. I oddly enough, well, my first ever ever career was as a championship tennis player. I traveled the world competing. I'm actually the same age as Serena. We competed and um, played together multiple times as kids. And the last time we played together, we were teenagers, in fact, and played in a full arena, signed autographs, all that good stuff. I played in tournaments in Europe representing the USA. So tennis was my first love. Then uh, once I graduated from college, I went on to law school, which was the, kind of the odd duck. I didn't know what I wanted to do. So, so I fell into law and the education was amazing. The experience was amazing. The training, wonderful. I honestly, uh, while I had the quote unquote dream job, I just was miserable, Parker. So I knew I was going to make a shift into another career. I didn't know what. So I went on to LinkedIn. This was back in 2010. LinkedIn was primarily the job search tool. So I, I started networking on there. I knew I didn't want to be spammy. I knew I didn't want to just spam out my resume. I knew I didn't, I wanted to attract my next opportunity rather than chase. So I started sharing my insights, my knowledge, and companies started reaching out to me, but not to hire me as an employee. But as a contractor saying, it's Lena, we love what you're doing. We see you everywhere. We want to do that for us. So essentially what I was doing back in 2010, before the Facebook business page even rolled out, um, this whole idea of the social media management, that wasn't even an industry. 
uh, that's what I was doing. And this company wanted me to do that for them. So I was like, okay, sure, I'll do that while I look for a job. And then another company asked me to do the same thing. And then a small business and another small business and then an individual and then another person. And before I knew it, I was having a hard time finding time to go on job interviews and look for a job. So I thought, (laughs) hmm, this is kind of, I'm enjoying it. This seems to be a thing, a need. And I definitely felt more in alignment. I was happier for sure. So I went ahead and it took me a couple of years, I'll admit, but I made the entrepreneurship leap and officially started my company in 2012. 2012. That's crazy. So it's been a few years now that you've been totally doing your own thing. Yeah. Social media management for the past nine years. We just celebrated our nine year work anniversary. I went from just being myself to now I have four other people on my team. We have 12, we have clients in 12 different states. So it's just, it's been like a dream. I'm living my dream. <laughs> yeah. Well, and you're a really great speaker too. Um, just even right now, like you're speaking at a kit's great. And I, I know from looking into you that you do public speaking as well. So how has, how has speaking kind of played a role in this career that you've jumped into? Sure. Well, what was funny is when I was working in the legal field, obviously you need to talk, you need to present to judges, talk to other attorneys. So that really honed my public speaking skills. And actually someone mentioned me one day after work, it's funny, you're a good public speaker. You have a gift. I was like, no, everyone talks. You're like, I, I just talk. You know? And um, Everyone uh, she- talks. I love that. <laughs> and I thought, yeah. and so she said, no, 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 you have a gift. So that just went into the back of my head. So when I started my social media company, I thought, well, I should incorporate public speaking. I was told a while back that I'm a good public speaker. So yeah, I give over 40 talks a year. Uh, educating, giving away free social media advice to companies and businesses and individual networking groups. And people become clients as a result of hearing me share and wanting us to take over their social media accounts. That's so cool. And you may, you may have shared this and I just may have missed it, but is there a certain industry that you tend to lean toward for helping them with their social media? And if so, why that industry versus okay. the other ones? <laughs> So just like with my job or work, line of work that I ended up falling in, I, I solely went based on how I feel, how I how it made me feel, uh, whether I was in alignment. Uh, same thing with this niche. Uh, you can imagine since my previous career was law, initially I would go into law firms and speak and share. And, you know, the attorneys would kind of just sit there with their arms crossed and their black blazers and they wouldn't laugh at any of my jokes. And then one day I happened to meet a realtor, a real estate agent, and she said, I can come have you speak to a group of agents. It was over 300 people. I went there. They were laughing. They were on the edge of their seats. They were super engaged. And I was like, oh, my God, these are my people. So I just made it another decision totally just based on how I felt, just a gut feeling. And it turns out real estate is a very relationship heavy business. People care who their their realtor is. They want to know about them, where they live, the area, all these things. So having a social media presence for an agent just makes a lot of business sense. So it worked out. It was a good business decision. That's how it happened. And 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 so now you know who real estate, the real estate world. <laughs> Love it. Yeah, there's something to be said about just choosing who you vibe with. You know, that's like, I mean, that's a big thing on, sorry, my dogs are barking. That's a big thing on Clubhouse too, you know, finding your tribe, so to speak, finding people who you jive with and and who you enjoy speaking with and working with. And it's the same in business too. You know, you don't want to constantly be partnering with people who bring you down or, or you feel like you're not really vibing, you know? So yeah. that's a, that's a really big important thing in my in my opinion and it seems like yours too Absolutely. Um, so and i can relate a little bit because i i have nothing to do with dentistry but my mom has worked in dentistry for like over 20 years and like i do podcast production and i help clients and and typically it's like people in dentistry who are reaching out to me and I'm just like, it's sometimes those, it's those little niche industries of real estate, of law, of dentistry who really need help with these kinds of things. They, 
they spend a lot of time learning their craft and they don't know the kinds of things that we do. Um, so I guess in helping with real estate and with helping people build their online presence, what's like a number one myth you you hear from them about social media? <laughs> yes. Okay. So um, I would say specific to LinkedIn, for example, the number one myth is that it's just for job seeking. That was back in 2010. You can imagine over the last 10 years, LinkedIn has definitely shifted and grown and evolved into a business networking tool. So my clients and I, we're actually taking on new clients as a result of being present and networking on LinkedIn. I would say that's definitely a myth, thinking that it's still only a job search tool. And do you find that that there's a lot of doubt and hesitancy just with Instagram and LinkedIn um, as to whether or not it works? Because <laughs> that's yeah, something I, think, I run into. I think there's, sure. I think with thanks to, I don't want to say the C word, but you know, thanks to that thing, that health thing out there that's happening, <laughs> it pushed us all online and people see the value more so now oh my God, well, I can't go meet in large groups like I used to. So being online makes a lot of sense. So I would say definitely this past year, there's been a huge shift there. But I think you, I still hear people, they seem surprised that, oh, you mean I can take on new clients as a result of being on social media? Well, remember, if you look at Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn as networking events, for example, you're building a relationship, you're being present there, you're showing up. And that's how relationships turn into clientele. So it's the same thing. And I think people just don't realize sometimes that surprise or it doesn't seem logical. <laughs> yeah. Well, and what's crazy too with networking events, oftentimes it's a pretty high ticket thing to go to. Yeah. The platforms are free. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah. it's like, yeah. why not? Right. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Why not? I love that. Awesome. Um, well, I guess in in this niche of of um, building your brand on on social media, how much of it would you say is personal brand versus them trying to create like a business brand? Sure. So, what's so nice and just my philosophy of marketing is. Your brand, you are your brand as far as your business and your personal, and that should be combined essentially. So, for example, if you were to look at my Instagram, I have you will you're gonna find absolutely social media tips. You're gonna see there where we're informing people about how we help people with social media. That's obviously the business part. Um, but you're also gonna see me on the tennis court. Um, tennis is part of who I am and my philosophy of marketing is that we don't want to separate who you are from your business. You are your business. So I really like to distinguish between personal versus private. Private, we're going to keep behind closed doors and we're not going to post about those things. But personal just means it's personal to you, meaning like tennis, you don't mind people knowing that you work out or that you're out doing these you know, certain things. So that's personal both the more personal things that people can relate to that you should still that I, I'm a fan of incorporating into your branding. Got it. I absolutely love that. It's awesome. Uh, okay, I got to ask too, um, what's your favorite Instagram or LinkedIn? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Instagram is fun. Right. I, I find it fun. I love doing stories. I, I shared a story, which I saw you viewed today about how I got this mystery gift in the mail. It was a really cool <laughs> book. I have no idea who sent it. And if your viewers want to connect with me on Instagram is at Italina K, which is just my first name and last name initial. Uh, so Instagram is more fun. LinkedIn, I love because it's business. Like I get, I set so many consultations up because I'm networking on LinkedIn. I have money waiting for me in my inbox right now. Someone's saying, hey, it's Lena. We want you to pay you to come teach this class. Hey, it's Lena. I want to find out more about your social media services, right? So that is just um, LinkedIn because it's the number one professional site. It's where people are very comfortable with doing business. Don't get me wrong. Instagram, absolutely. I also have an Instagram message of someone wanting to set up a consultation. So both are great for business. 
I would say the most fun I'm having is on Instagram. Love it. And would you recommend then having both? <laughs> oh, yes. Absolutely. Yes. And what I understand is Clubhouse is making it to where they're going to also link the LinkedIn page. Have you heard that? I have yeah. not, but that excites me big time. Right. So I think LinkedIn and Instagram, that's that's where I definitely spend the most time more so than um, I'm, I'm not going to name any other names. <laughs> 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 Sounds good. I think that's so awesome. And it's definitely important to have a combination and just be showing up, you know, um, I guess to get started for, I mean, I'd assume most people at least have the platforms, but if they're listening in to this episode right now and they're thinking, okay, gosh, like I really need to get started. I really like, she inspired me. Italina inspired me to like actually start going and like do this. What's like some first, I guess, beginner strategies to to kick it off right? Happy to share. So first things first, we want to make sure your bio, just like in your clubhouse bio, your bio on LinkedIn says something that makes it clear like, oh, she does ABC. I definitely want to connect with her. Or he does XYZ. That's someone I definitely want to connect with. So make sure that all this awesomeness that you have in person is conveyed on your bio as well. So that's first things first. And your audience is totally welcome to look at my LinkedIn uh, bio, LinkedIn profile to see some of the cool things I do on there to just help them with as far as guidance. And by the way, Parker, that's actually our number one most popular service where people want us to rewrite their bios for them. And people also want us to we we rewrite their uh, clubhouse bios even. So wow. Yeah, that's our number one most popular service. And I would say the second is the weekly post where we post for them on a consistent basis. So gotcha. getting your, your bios in order, number one. And then number two, anyone you meet uh, who's expressed any interest in what you do, who can maybe they could be a potential, whether it be a potential client or a potential referral source, someone who can make introductions for you, connect with them on LinkedIn. Right. You meet someone on Clubhouse and they've expressed some sort of interest. Connect with them on LinkedIn and Instagram. Right. So connecting to build your network so you stay in front of each other. Absolutely. Love that. Thanks for sharing those those tips. <laughs> I, I really appreciate it. I think people listening in are going to they're going to be motivated to go out there and and at least even if they have those things, you know, re look at it and try to adjust those things or maybe even reach out to you for help because some people they don't want to do those things. And that's why they, they make popular services, you know, exactly. so it's awesome. Well, I want to kind of backtrack a little bit here to your story of of taking the leap so to speak um and just kind of in closing closing out here too in the next few minutes i just i wanted to ask what maybe tips or advice do you have for people who are in that boat that you were in you know 9 or 10 years ago where you made that leap into entrepreneurship i think that's I think that's a place where so many people are at right now. And honestly, I think uh, that medical C word that you brought up, I think that kind of pushed people into into entrepreneurship. Like, oh, I've got to have side hustles. I've got to have an online presence. I've got to be making money on my own on my own terms. You know, for people who are in that place, what advice do you have for them? Yes, I got two big pieces. So number one, when I was working in the legal field and I, I knew I was going to eventually make a shift, I immediately started saving. So start saving for it because you know there's going to be some transition time you know, before you start really making uh, some real income. So start saving immediately. And then number two, don't try to have everything, wait until you have everything all figured out. It's never going to happen. You're never going to have everything all fi figured out. Build the plane as you fly it. So as you heard with my niche, I, if I would have went, because I didn't have a niche, but I started my business. I didn't figure it out until I started going along. Think as you make the step, the next step will unfold. Absolutely love that. I love that analogy to um, build the plane as you fly. I've never heard that before, but I... I think that's exactly what it is. You know, it's, I've, I've heard, um, I've heard the analogy building your escape plan, like, like in movies when people escape from jail or whatever. <laughs> and like that kind of makes sense to, to a certain extent. But 
I guess once you get out, once you've escaped, like you're still you're still running with, you know, uh, improv. You're just yeah. praying, hope, crossing your fingers, hoping for the best. And I think the building the plane as you fly it is a great analogy. Um, well, I've got this last little segment that I call the upbeat seat. Uh, but before we move into that, I was just curious if you had anything else maybe pressing that you'd, that you'd love to add, or maybe I didn't touch on. Um, and if not, we'll go ahead and move into the next segment. Um, I don't think I have anything to add. I'll just, um, yeah, go ahead. Let's, let's move into the next segment. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. Well, this is the upbeat seat. Um, and I just ask a few kind of like five or six uh, quicker questions, but overall, and the first one actually is what inspired last night's uh, clubhouse room. The what makes you upbeat? So the first question is, what makes you upbeat? I am an extrovert, and while I have an underlying joy that maintains can pretty consistent, even though there's hardships and things coming my way, I still have an underlying joy. Uh, there are days when I am. If I, if I am down or not as upbeat as I usually am, connecting with people, a phone call, hopping on Clubhouse, pe- I, I feel like we as people, we are the best things to happen to each other. It's true. I love that. Who is your number one influence or inspiration? Okay. So I, I, my grandmother came to my mind right away. If I were to think further, I can think of some other people, but she came to my mind right away. She immigrated here. And I think about just, I remember just how strong she was. She passed away. So I remember how strong she, she was. And she, even she was tired and didn't feel like doing things. I saw her still making things happen. So that inspires me and makes me feel like, it's Lena, what are you doing? Get yourself together. You have nothing to be complaining about. So definitely my grandmother. Awesome. So cool. Uh, what music do you listen to to stay upbeat and motivated? So first kind um, uh, um, house comes to my mind, right? It's, it's very, and it's kind of like um, <laughs> across like a little bit of techno, like it's that is very, you know, very upbeat. Mm. <laughs> I think, I think you would be a great beatboxer. <laughs> <laughs> Heard that little. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what is your favorite word? My favorite word. Fun. Fun. That's so Simple, cool. Short. And it, it lists your mood. Makes things better. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what is a favorite TV show of yours? So I don't watch much TV these days. I don't even own a TV, in fact. But the last show that I recall that I was just obsessed with, Scandal with Kerry Washington. Awesome. I don't think I've seen it. I should probably go look into it. <laughs> Though I'll be honest, since Clubhouse, I've not really watched TV <laughs> or played video games or anything. Like I'm basically working or on Clubhouse. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, awesome. Okay. Favorite social media platform uh, is the next question, but I Instagram. know- I know already uh, we talked Instagram and LinkedIn, uh, but could you share your handles once again, just so they know um, where they can find you? Yeah. So on Instagram is Italina K I T A L I N A K. And then on LinkedIn, um, maybe they can see my name there all spelled out Italina Kirkness. Perfect. Awesome. Well, thanks again for being on Upbeats. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and close us out here by beatboxing your name real quick. And hopefully it comes through over Zoom. I've messed with some settings, so we'll see. <laughs> yeah, and I would love people to connect with me and say that you they saw me here with you, Parker. Yes, that would be awesome. Definitely do that. Everybody reach out. Let us know what you thought of this episode, uh, and we'd love to connect with you. <clears throat> Awesome. Well, thanks so much for being on Upbeat. Appreciate you.
So there's my interview with Italina Kirkness. And of course, we'd both love to stay connected with you. So you can find me at my website, parkercane.co, parkercane.co, and Italina on Instagram at Italina K, I T A L I N A K, and on LinkedIn, Italina Kirkness. Guys, if you enjoyed this episode or got value from the episode, please share it with a friend and leave an upbeat review. That's always super appreciated. So thank you for that. You guys are the best. I'll see you next week. This is Upbeat with beatboxer, musician, speaker, and show host, Parker K. Subscribe at parkerk.co.